Nice to meet you, Kenneth. I am Spiros Stathulopoulos, film director and screenwriter uh, from uh, Colombia and Greece. And this is Andres. Hi. Hi, Hi Kenneth. So, so nice to meet you. I'm, I'm also a film director and TV director here, here in Colombia. Uh, mm -hmm. It's an honor to be with you. I mean, I, I, we admire your work. So it's just so it's such a pleasure. Thank you. What led you to exclude different tones that you did not use? Or what led you to include or to select the tone uh, that you are using in this film? Were you trying to draw away from sentimentalism? Were you trying to innovate in a, um, expressing the sentiments of that era? Were you trying to innovate um, in a childhood uh, coming of age, essentially, story? That's one question. Well, uh, one uh, internal uh, resolution was not to uh, uh, second guess my instinct. It was to try to follow my instinct at all times. So when I wrote, I was very disciplined about uh, not overthinking what I was doing. I wanted the, the script to come as directly from the heart as possible. On the way, at some points, I had many other songs from the 60s in the film, and I had people lip syncing them to them. And, uh, and I, so I had a tone at some stages that was, was reminiscent of the, the work of Dennis Potter in a film like uh, Pennies from Heaven. Um, and that did not work. Uh, it became clear that a single musical voice was required. And that's when I knew that Van Morrison, uh, you might say the soul of Belfast, the city, uh, musically, was going to be very uh, important. Um, the other thing that I knew I wanted to exclude was an overt political film or a film overtly dealing with the Protestant situation, but instead to firmly live in the point of view of a nine-year-old, one kid, one family, one street, uh, have my lived experience be the center of it, allow for some of his imagination to make certain parts of the film larger than life, but try to keep to the authentic family beats as they navigate um, through a, a moment, not unlike the beginning of the pandemic, where suddenly we were all finding ourselves living in a world that no longer had a certain future. Uh, that unsettled, volatile world was what the nine-year-old was trying to negotiate away from innocence and into the beginnings of an enforced adulthood. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think you did it wonderfully. It's, it's such a beautiful film. And, and what Spiros was saying, it's just, it's not present at the bottom. It's just, it, it allows you to, to feel and to feel the, the, the emotions of the characters. Uh, I, was, I was wondering in that sense, um, it's, a, it's a film that happens in one block, one street, but yet it feels so universal, you know, uh, being Colombian and coming from Latin America, I think we can relate to that problem of migration and how families have to move to another place in, in, in search of a better, um, better quality of, you know, of, of life. And, and did you ever thought this film would have that, that connection to the people? And, and would you, as you, you thought it would be so universal or you just kept it to your, you know, to your imagination and your thoughts and your, uh, how you remember that, that time. When uh, it, it took so long to write, I mean, it was the lockdown that really unlocked it. But for the previous 50 years, I had found that I did not have the understanding of how to do it. And I didn't want to make it because I thought that maybe it was too small a movie. It was too particular. It was too personal. I didn't want to visit on the world some piece of personal therapy of mine. I thought mm -hmm. I only want to tell this story if there is a personal connection where other people could identify with maybe the loss of innocence or the uh, invasion of their childhood or uh, family migration or, or, you know, things where that could maybe speak to other people. And when I started to try to raise money for the film, that's when I realized that it did strike a chord because there was absolutely no problem for anyone about the fact that it was called Belfast, that it was set in mm -hmm. Belfast. And it became an example, which you'll know of as directors and screenwriters, that sometimes when you go for the very, very particular and the completely specific, it can sometimes be your best chance of making mm -hmm. it universal. Fortunately, I cannot um, right now... Um 
complement uh, to what Andres was saying because I had in mind another question, which I mean, but uh, it also answers Andres your question, some curiosity that I had, but uh, Kenneth, uh, of course, in doing something that is, um, yeah, uh, that stems from a personal experience uh, and seeing that you did not name the character as yourself, which is a different character, there is certain fiction in it. So my question is, uh, to what extent or what were the limits uh, in the reality and the fiction? Uh, was it uh, because you did not remember certain things? So was it a, a situation in terms of memory? Was it because you wanted to exercise your creativity that you fill in the blanks in certain ways? Was it because uh, you wanted um, uh, to stay uh, in, uh, in the same direction of your uh, intention in uh, not giving a center, a center place attention to the political situation. What made you, yeah. Well, it's an interesting question that, that do you know, a part of the time I really thought um, that I was writing a Western. Um, my father used to say, my God, there are so many cowboys in Belfast. And, uh, you know, other people would often refer to it when people like Billy Clanton arrived on the scene, at like the, the, that it was like the Wild West. Um, and so um, that's where I began to think that I, I want the characters to go back to, uh, you know, what you were saying earlier, to, to have these, these, these sort of more mythic names, Ma and Pa, yeah. uh, Pop, yeah. for, for Buddy to be the name of the sort of international everyman, your friend, yeah. your, your guide, us. Uh, me, you mm. and me are in there as, 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 and you hope that he is a friend. You hope that that experience is, it, it has a, a buddy quality to it. Um, that, I, I guess, um, I wanted also in having that sort of Western framework and staying a little mythic, I wanted the opportunity to blur a massive experience and influence in my life, which was movies, and to be mm. able to see him watch Westerns and start to try and use other narratives to explain his own life. It's so overwhelming, it's so instant, that the change in his life is so catastrophic that, that you're looking for other narratives to do it, other music to do it. So eventually you can get to a moment which comes out of a real moment, which is the looting of the supermarket into which my mother and I returned. But the gunfight that happens mm. afterwards, if you like, comes out of Buddy's imagination, even though mm. there was a real, there was a real face off between those characters, but not quite as it is in the film, but somehow it's how the traumatized Buddy was now starting to see it. So I left some room to join up mm. with what my imagination was trying to do to cope with the um, overwhelming nature of, of, of how life had changed. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was wondering. This is a, a much lighter question, but uh, did you did you come back to Belfast and did you meet you real the real person? Uh, meet again, Catherine, the little girl, <laughs> or what happened to her? <laughs> well, as you know, as you can as, as you can imagine, the, the the names have been changed to protect the innocent. So yeah. you know, th this very day, the film opens in Ireland, and and it, right now it is selling out in Belfast. So I've been thrilled to hear. Um, so I, you know, I just wonder if Catherine goes to see the movie, if she's still with us, if Catherine <laughs> goes to see the movie and realizes that's me, you know, and I get the knock on the door or the email saying, it was me. I never knew you didn't come back. You know, um, I thought she, like, like Buddy says, you know, I think she, I think she likes that other fella. I think she likes the maths guy, the numbers guy. The maths guy. Uh, yeah. But, and, and so uh, it'll be interesting. I wonder if he recognizes himself as well, but uh, uh, I didn't get to see her again. No, I think, I think she ran off uh, with the guy who, who could do maths. That's, that's, I, I would like to add to that. That's a very uh, nice question, Andres. Because, of course, I want to, now that Andres asks that in terms of that love story, because, of course, I mean, we, we know, I mean, we grew up, the first film that I saw of yours was Frankenstein when I was 15 years old. And we know, of course, f further on and before, of course, uh, your uh, passion for Shakespeare. So was it uh, uh, this, the Protestants and the Catholics, which were you and Catherine, what, was that uh, an unconscious and a forbidden love story between the Montagues and the Capulets. <laughs> I think there was, I, I think I couldn't help Romeo and Juliet creeping in somehow. Right. It's such a sort of classic exactly. trope. 
It was also, it was the very first play I directed. I've directed mm. it again since. There's often been talk about making a movie. So yes, these, uh, the, the, because also I guess it's a central theme because you know, we're in a world that's polarized, politics are tribal. This right, basic, right. The basic message of the film is in, encapsulated at the end. Do you think we have a future? You know, she's a Catholic. Mm, right. if, you know, if you are kind, if you respect each other, if you are fair, then then mm. everybody's welcome. Those are very difficult things to achieve in this world. And Romeo and Juliet, as an example, as a play of how difficult they are to achieve and how hard it is for anybody to forgive. So I think yeah. maybe somehow, you know, you'll know from your own writing, tons of things go in that are unconscious. So maybe yeah. that was right, one of them. right. Right, yeah. right, for sure. That was very well. We, when we saw the movie with Andres, we saw it together and we yeah, and laughed at the same spots and we enjoyed yeah. the same spots. <laughs> and uh, we really, uh, really thought that the best dialogue was the dialogue between the two little kids, the, the love story. Hi, hi, bye, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was uh, gr great dialogue. I like that because also. It's you know, I like it when you've got to a, a really big, complicated scene where somebody's just going, cheerio, cheerio, <laughs> I'll be back, exactly. make sure you are. It's fantastic. Well, well Kenneth, we hope that uh, Catherine comes back to your life and we wish you the best with this film. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good to talk I... to you both. I really appreciate it. Good luck with all your work. Thank, Thank you. you. So Thank you so much. For, for... For giving us this this beautiful film. Thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate it.